You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. For those of you that are listening on radio, you can't see it. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, you will see it. And for those of you that are going to catch up to us tonight on television, you're going to see it too. Dude, I got a big old fat smile on my face today because we are live in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, but we brought them to Del Mar. Today is opening day at Del Mar, and I told you all week long, we're going to bring you all of the characters, all of the colors, all of the pageantry of opening day, a celebration here in San Diego. Uh, I can see all my buddies are already starting to show up here. Jason Lawhead's going to come on and talk to us. I'm sure he's got a lot to say about the NBA Finals, okay, and the officiating. Uh, I, mean, I know Jay Law wants to talk about that. Um, I see the kitty cat. Browner, you're going to love this. Felix Taverna is in the house uh, from our Saturday morning show on 1090. Um, and so, again, Craig Dato is going to be by. And uh, we're going to hear about the Breeders' Cup, which is going to happen here. This is after the Del Mar racing season and before the fall meet. So um, the, the Olympics of horse racing will come back to Del Mar this year. So, look, big smile on my face. Super stoked. Rocking my great friend Stables golf shirt today because we've got three horses running today. We've got one on Saturday, two on Sunday. So we're going to come flying out of the gate with six races in the first three days of racing. So look, great friends. I got it, man. Not everybody loves horse racing, but everybody loves Del Mar. Everybody loves Del Mar. So we're just getting going. This opening segment of the show, I want to talk about a lot of the headlines that are happening around sports because I'm telling everybody right now, we may not get to a whole bunch of the sports stuff as the show goes on because we're going to be doing a whole lot of Del Mar stuff. So with that said, say good afternoon to this young fella right here. He's six foot seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max. He's the hot take machine and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Saw. He's bringing the street cred from the seven mile casino podcast shed which has now moved into our new Sorrento Valley offices <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh let me tell you something he's been flexing pretty hard recently on Instagram showing off that reverse dunk from <sighs> Petco Park from 10 years ago representing Chicago mm -hmm. South Side Big Brown JB the Brown man John Browner in the house on opening day what do you say Brown man Look, man, I got to tell y'all, no hit list today. Today is a day of joy, okay? Today is a day of, of, of upspringing energy. This is one of my favorite days in San Diego. My, I think it goes like 4th of July, and then it goes Del Mar. And then after that, every day is cool. But this day specifically is one of my favorite days since I've actually started hanging out and doing certain things here. The track is one of my favorite places. Even though there won't be any concerts, there's still a great time. You're meeting great people. You're hanging out with fun people. It's good times. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Cameron puts up the hit list. The hit list today. Nothing. 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 Not, a, not a thing. No hit list. Hey, for everybody that's watching on YouTube, over my shoulder here, say what's up to Richie Rich, Rich Elrod in the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got to kiss it out right there. Mm, mm, yeah. So Rich has been with us, man, for Evs, right? Way back in the old school at 1090 and is out there hustling for us now, man. So uh, for everybody that's listening, when you call me or you email, and you email me and you go, yo, how do I get involved with sponsorship of the show? That's the man right there. He takes care of all that bidnit. He takes care of the bidnit of the show. No, you know what I'm saying, Brown? Bidness. Bidness. Oh, not bidnit. Bidnit is a person. Bidness. Oh. Business is an action of money transferring hands. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. You're Thank welcome. you for that. That lesson in how we, to sound cool. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Yeah. yeah. We out here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the guy who's going to help us today in this opening segment so we can actually get into a little bit of sports headlines before all the people start showing up here at Del Mar. This guy has done such a great job all week long. I have asked a 20-year-old kid, a college student from Syracuse University, the Newhouse School of Broadcasting, and I said it to him yesterday, and I'll say it to him again and again. You go to Syracuse all day long. Syracuse can suck it, and here's why. You will learn more about broadcasting in one week 
working for this show and the pressure. Did you see him sweating the other day? Pits, head, neck. Kid was in a complete state of panic. We had 1% of battery left to get into five minutes of content. We almost didn't make it to the finish line. And I heard it all play out yesterday on the radio. Everybody, hey, give it up to this young fellow right here. He has kicked ass for us this week. Total commitment, total professionalism. And he's only 20 years old. Syracuse through San Diego. Cameron is here. Cam, my man. What's going on? I just want to say it wasn't five minutes. I think it was 17 to 20 minutes. I think I had double pit stains. It was one of the worst <laughs> stresses of my life. Now, I, I just want to get straight into it. It's Del Mar. We all know it's opening day. So let's get into our biggest winner, biggest loser before I break down the biggest sports headlines that we have. Biggest winner. This one's an obvious one. Come on. Biggest winner. Del Mar Racetrack. We're starting off. We got opening day. We got Scott at opening day. The Del Mar Racetrack's the biggest winner. It's the best event of the year, especially in San Diego. I know I'm excited. I know JB's excited. And Scott, that smile, that that you know, that mug on your face, it has not gone away. So I enjoy <laughs> that. Big winner, Del Mar Racetrack represent. Biggest losers, and I'm going to say losers, this is plural. It's me and the brown man. It's me and the brown man. We're the biggest losers, <laughs> and this is why. I know you enjoy that picture, JB. We are the what biggest losers. What are you losers. doing? <laughs> we are the biggest losers because we don't get to be at the Del Mar racetrack for opening day. Scott, you get that opportunity. You get that privilege. Me and Browner have to stay in this corporate office. We love it. It's nice and cozy, but I'd much rather be at the racetrack. So the winner is the racetrack. The loser, me and Big Brown for, you know, having to be stuck in this office with this, what, this lighting that is a little fluorescent. So <laughs> biggest winner, biggest loser of the day. I got you. I'm feeling you. Hey, listen, let me tell you guys something real quick, and then we'll get to the top sports headlines, and then people are going to start flowing in. But real quickly, let me tell you guys a quick story. So last night, we had the Great Friends Stables party. It's our opening day party at La Berge Hotel um, here in Del Mar, which is kind of the center of the city of Del Mar. And um, we had, I mean, there must have been like 200 people there last night, and that's because we put together, um, you know, our party with our friends from L.A., Little Red Feather. You hear that, L.A. Brown? I got some friends in L.A., L.A. Brown. Okay, than, L.A. Cap. Other than you, L.A. Brown. Okay, all right? L.A. Cap. Okay, I got some friends from L.A., dog. Okay, so so Little Red Feather is this other racing group. They were the guys that we did um, Stable Wars with years ago, the TV show. And um, we had like 200 people there last night. And I come walking into this party, and what blows my mind is how every person there has a – and I don't mean every person, but anybody I talked to kind of had a different way – that they were taken in the show. And, and it was interesting too. Some older dudes were like, Hey man, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I guess you guys uh, never got back on radio, huh? But I, I, I catch up to you on YouTube. I'm like, wait a second. You're like a 60 something year old dude and you watch YouTube. And he's like, yeah, I don't, I, that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber now. And so, um, I said, but yeah, we're on radio. And then there are other people that are like, yeah, dude, I catch up to you guys on 1090 still. I'm glad you guys are back. But it shocks me how many people are like, whatever happened to you how come the show never got back on and i have to explain to people that yeah we're back on 1090 but they say no but i'm catching you on youtube or this other guy came up to me last night he's like dude i have a battle in my house every day is it jeopardy or is it kaplan and crew do i want to <laughs> watch jeopardy at seven or do i want to watch kaplan and crew at seven he goes and sometimes you're in the middle of this rant or browner's going off on something but i really want to get back over to jeopardy and you guys won't let me go so i'm telling everybody right now 1090 listeners, happy to have you guys along. YouTube viewers, glad we got everything straightened out. It only took us three days, but we we finally got things right. Um, television viewers tonight, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, 118 in Palos Verdes, 118 in Orange County, part of the Cox Your View Network. And listen, if you're catching up over the weekend and you're listening on audio podcasts, happy to have everybody along. So I see Craig Dato behind me over in his office because, uh, hey, Craig, what's up, Craig? And uh, so we're right here, right off Craig's office and, and looking out over, you know, at the beautiful scenery and, and the, the clubhouse here and the paddock. And, and we're going to be doing a lot today about Del Mar. It's not, we're not, believe me, nobody's breaking down horse racing per se, although there will be some people who want to come by and give you some winners. But otherwise, it's all about Del Mar today. But Browner and Cameron, 
Before we get started, men, let's go through the top headlines today so that for those of you that are listening on radio, um, especially, you know, at least we're going to give you guys some of what is the stuff that people are talking about relative to sports. All right, Cameron, take us through it, man. Let's get it rolling with the top headlines of sports today. And we have to start with probably the biggest topic of yesterday's show and the story just keeps developing and that's Richard Sherman. We talked about Richard Sherman. We talked about Trevor Bauer. Mm -hmm. There's new developments in this Richard Sherman case. So I'm going to read it out. Here's the graphic. I'm going to pop up on the screen. If you're a YouTuber TV watcher, the new developments in the Richard Sherman case, the judge found probable cause that Sherman committed four offenses the judge did release Sherman from jail without bail. He said that he's a pillar of the community, so yeah. he deserves at least that. Prosecutors yeah. suggested a $10,000 bail, which was declined by the judge. Sherman has not been charged with the, the felony residential burglary allegation yet. So, yes, he's been found to cause those four offenses but that one felony when it comes to domestic violence that one has not been enacted yet overall the judge ordered that sherman not have contact with his father-in-law consume alcohol or non-prescription drugs or possess a weapon anytime soon the biggest thing the next hearing is today and he does not have to be present so richard sherman wasn't present at yesterday's hearing he's not going to be present at today's hearing either yeah you know what let me start off um just really quickly and, and leave the graphic up on the screen for one second i love the fact that the judge called him a pillar of the community because mm -hmm. because you know what it sounds like to me browner it sounds like like richard sherman had a breakdown of some kind yep you know what i'm saying yep. like like hey you know sometimes i can i can tell you this my um ex-wife her father-in-law or her father, rather, my ex-father-in-law. Dude, I freaking hated this guy. And I say it like <laughs> that because he was a jerk to me. And and he was a he was kind of a bully of a guy. And um, you know, there there was one time he and I, and you can bring us back now, Cameron, but there was one time he and I literally almost got into it. You know, like we almost got down. And when I say we almost got down, I mean I almost killed this guy. Like I almost <laughs> kicked his ass. You know what I'm saying? And um and, and I'm not like some tough guy. It's just that he's like 80. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had his number. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so here's the thing. The, the father-in-law, Richard Sherman's father-in-law, was interesting. He was saying that he sprayed Richard Sherman with pepper spray and armed himself with a gun because they were scared of him. And they said that the cops didn't like go in and try and arrest him right away because he was they thought he was drunk. They thought he was on some kind of drugs. They thought he was out of control. They said, he's a big, strong guy and he's out of control. So the cops, from what I had read, kind of backed away a little bit and let the scene play out. But um, I don't know that they were standing there watching him freak out on everybody. I'm just saying that they were being careful. And I right. love that the judge said, hey, look, you know, $10,000, we don't need to do that. This, you know, he's not going anywhere. You know, everybody knows who he is. He is a pillar in the community. He has been a good man in the community. And you know what? He, something happened something snapped we don't know what happened in his life okay because not only was he freaking out but he was also you know t telling people he was you know potentially suicidal so right here, here's what i think and i said this the other day i love richard sherman okay and people have episodes and i hope he gets his stuff together is what i'm saying look now that i know it was the father-in-law it makes more way makes way more sense. Makes way, <laughs> makes way way more sense now. We know it was the father-in-law and not the mom or not the not the actual wife. So this will get cleared up. This will get cleared up, man. He I don't think he'll face any suspension or anything like that. He he didn't possess a weapon. He didn't he didn't hurt anyone per se, other than threatening to hurt himself. And he had a disagreement with his father-in-law who pepper sprayed him. So yeah, yeah it, no, man, listen, everybody wants to knock out their father-in-law from time to time. So. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Yeah, now what I truth. will say, what I will say is what benefits Richard Sherman is his wife is also backing him. In yes, that same right. report, yep. he was saying, or the wife was saying, I love him. I'm here to support him. So that yep. also benefits Sherman. All right, let's keep going though, because I wanna I wanna just make sure that we get in a bunch of other stuff. Here, here's an interesting story. Um, and, and if Padre fans, I would say we, we should probably all be keeping our eyes on this one. Cause remember how we were celebrating last week that the Padres had all these guys go to the all-star game. Well, mm -hmm. now there are a whole bunch of guys at the all-star game that have tested positive for COVID. 
uh, six Yankee players testing positive for COVID. I don't have a story yet on whether or not these guys were vaxxed or not. Um, but Brown, do you know anything about that? Uh, he's got the he's got a slide. I mean, he got all the slides. He's a Let's slide. do it. Come on, Scott. Well, I got okay. the full reports. Okay, so, here we go, Cameron. Take us through the, it. These are the six players that ultimately tested positive for COVID-19. The three position players to your left, Aaron Judge, Gio Urshela, and Kyle Higashioka, they all tested positive due to rapid tests. So mm -hmm. they're still waiting for that positive test for a more accurate test. Mm -hmm. The three pitchers to the right, I think it's Jonathan Loasiga, Nestor Cortez Jr., and Wandy Peralta, all three of those guys officially tested positive. So right now, it's up in the air if all six are positive, but president of the Yankees, Brian Cashman, said they're all going to test positive. It is believed that a majority of them were vaccinated. Mm -hmm. All the pitchers to your right, all the relievers, they're all vaccinated. But the report said a majority of the players were vaccinated. So it makes me think that either Aaron Judge or Kyle Higashioka isn't because Urshela is. So I, I think most of them were vaccinated. And you talk about the major concerns, Scott. I mean, the Yankees were one of the first teams in the majors with all these guys that were vaccinated and with the three relievers as well as the position players, like I mentioned, most of them were vaccinated. And where the main cause for concern is, is that Boston series is up in the air. And if Aaron Judge does test positive, if that is clarified and cleared up, then you're talking about the all-star game and players in the AL and on the NL side that might have to miss some time if, you know, he had COVID going into the all-star yeah. game and he spread it there. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if you're a Padres fan, if you're listening today and you're a Dodgers fan, LA Brown, if you're an <laughs> angels fan, okay. You know that Otani was in that clubhouse with these dudes. And if these guys ultimately are found to have tested positive, than everybody who was in that American League clubhouse. And frankly, anybody who was in contact with these guys at the All-Star game, which could have been Tatis, could have been Machado, we don't know yet. Um, everybody is now, I, I'm going to say, susceptible. It's very interesting because today here at Del Mar, bring us back, Cameron. Uh, today here at Del Mar, um, you know, no one's going to be wearing masks. Everybody here is going to, and I was out last night, like I told you, a big party. Nobody's wearing masks at a restaurant last night. Nobody's wearing masks. Everybody's starting to feel more comfortable, especially those of us who are vaccinated. But the fact of the matter is, um, if you listen to the news in Los Angeles, as a matter of fact, they say that um, yep. anybody going indoors starting Saturday mask is going to have, they're, they're putting, they're saying mask up. Um, and so I would encourage everybody to kind of play by the rules because the worst thing that could happen, or at least I think the worst thing that could happen is we all feel like how awesome this is that we've come out of it. And now we could potentially be going back into it. So, all right, keep us going, Cam. Keep us going with these headlines, dog, because we, we've gone Richard Sherman. We've gone Yankees. Brown, you got something on this Yankee thing? I think that's the, the scary part about that is that a lot of those guys were vaccinated and they still ended up getting it. So this will mm -hmm. this will just re this will put the the people who don't want to get it. This will just give them another reason of why not to get it. But I would just encourage people that getting the shot means that you more than likely will not be hospitalized and you won't die from it. Like it's completely lessens the symptoms if you actually get it once you get the vaccination. So yeah. I know this is discouraging for people, but at the same time, you got to stay vigilant and you got to got to try to keep your distance if you can. Oh, make sure you're around the people that you're okay with. So, all right. All right. There you go. Good, good advice from big Brown. All right, Cameron, other sports headlines, Sherman Yankees COVID what's next. Yeah, this is going to close out our sports headline segment, and it's about Team USA. Bradley Beal tested positive a couple days ago, and it was just revealed that he will be ineligible to go to the Olympics, which means who's going to step in for his role. A lot of people are vouching for Anthony Edwards of the Timberwolves. And then you take into account who else on the team is affected as Jeremy Grant, the Pistons guard or small forward, is going into safety protocols. Greg Popovich did say he's optimistic that he'll return. So more COVID issues elsewhere yeah. as well. I mean, my goodness. How, how would we possibly have a chance at gold without Bradley Beal? Oh, my. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Grant. Oh, my. Oh, no. What are we going to do? I know. This what is an issue as well. Scott, this is an issue as well. COVID-19 cases in Tokyo are at a six-month high. Yeah, so I've that's also a that. big issue when it comes to the Olympics. Yeah, I've been reading about that as well. Yeah, um, this is it, it's again, we all kind of thought, well, 
you know, we went up and now we're kind of going out of it. And, and here we have all these stories. And what's up with Japan? Does anybody want to explain what's up with Japan? Like, why are cases so high there? Like, is, are they not getting vaccinated? Like, Canada was still shut down, you yeah. know? And, and I just wonder what's going on up there or out there. Who knows? I think there's minimal people that are vaccinated. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm going to take an assumption here. Probably a bad idea by me. But that's probably... <laughs> what the case is. So that's it. That's it. There, there are at least as we, as we get started here today from Del Mar and we say, look, this is going to be a very Del Mar centric kind of show. There are at least some of your top headlines from around the world of sports. Uh, listen, coming up, we got a great show for you. Comedian Jason Lawhead's going to be here. Wise guy Felix Tavern is going to be here. Craig Dato, who is the marketing director, the vice president of marketing, the chief marketing officer at Del Mar, he's going to be by. We're going to meet the CEO of the Breeders' Cup, who's going to be here. So listen, we're just getting rolling. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. We have moved them out here to Del Mar. It's opening day. It's Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and Crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Southern California radio is a special game, a unique game from the sandy beaches of the Baja and all the way to Santa Barbara. My voice sounds pretty cool. <laughs> the all new and mightier 1090. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More, Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego keeps families close to their hospitalized child. Stop by your local McDonald's today to make a donation or donate online. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Time now for Kaplan Accrued tonight's Community Connect. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently, about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. We are in the hope business. What we do every day and what we've done for 40 years is to provide kids and families going through critical illnesses hope that tomorrow's gonna to be a better day. My favorite wish is the next one. 
because that is the power of our organization is to bring hope to kids who are going through something right now and hope can't wait so people can get involved now by donating resources they can donate in kind they can donate their time as volunteers they can donate dollars because kids are still getting diagnosed with illnesses that qualify for Make-A-Wish every day. So people can visit us online at sandiego.wish.org. They can visit us and follow us on social media. There are so many ways to get connected and people can help in many, many different ways. We need your support now more than ever because illness doesn't take a vacation and it doesn't take a break because of COVID-19. Our massive signal covers an area where over 24 million people reside. So if you're listening or advertising on another station, we have only one question. Why? The new generation of radio, the all new and mightier 1090. Sometimes they say it might work, it might not work. And so I ask myself the question like, why even get the vaccine if it can also harm you? For me, it's like taking a 50-50 uh, chance. Hi, Andrea. Some say that the vaccine is harmful or that it might not work, but that's not true. Millions of people have been vaccinated with no ill effects, and I can tell you that getting the vaccine is far safer than not getting it. Moore's Cancer Center is the only comprehensive cancer center in San Diego, which has a NCI designation, which NCI stands for National Cancer Institute. And this is designated to only the highest possible ratings for cancer centers in the country. And that means that it's experts in every medical subspecialty pushing boundaries to, for difficult to treat cancers. We have a unique blend of cancer research and patient care, which really helps us take care of the whole patient from bench to bedside interventions with the latest research. And we're really pushing the boundaries to treat each individual cancer as much as possible. We're very proud of our leadership here in the community at UCSD. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, this is Pete Gray with this week's fish report and uh, great barracuda fishing continues off the LA area, the Horseshoe Kelp area and Catalina Island, still the three B's keeping people busy over there as well as some good yellowtail fishing too. San Clemente Island, big yellows at China Point, but you gotta have the squid to make them go. And a lot of light line fishing means a lot of people not getting them. Hey, bluefin tuna everywhere. Phenomenal bluefin tuna fishing. I went flying with Tom Green, the Sack Spotter Plane pilot this week. We saw 10,000 tons of tuna between the East End Catalina all the way down to the Nine Mile Bank. So you know what that means? It's time to go fishing. One of the schools we saw was over 500 yards long. So get on a boat, go fishing for tuna, and tune in to Let's Talk Hook Up this weekend. We have a couple of great shows for you this weekend. It's going to be really fun. So tune in on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090, and we'll see you soon. Let's Talk Hook Up airs on Mightier 1090, Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Classic Game Time. The best games from the past season on your view. Live soccer is back. Watch Orange County Soccer Club, OC's highest level of professional soccer, live on your view. Watch Orange County SC take on Rio Grande Valley FC, Saturday, July 17th at 5. Watch world-class players and future stars. Transform your summer with the new family game night in outdoor fun all season long. Live soccer is back. Orange County versus Rio Grande Valley, Saturday, July 17th at 5 on your view. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight. Powered by the mightier 1090 and your view. 
featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. All right, great friends. We welcome you back here to Del Mar. It is opening day. We've moved the Seven Mile Casino Studios out here. It is already a spectacular, gorgeous day. We're going to have great weather. We're going to have beautiful people. Everybody's going to be all dolled up. We're going to have great drinks. We're going to gamble and watch racing, and we're going to have so much fun. But here to discuss it all right now, he is the vice president of marketing. He's the chief marketing officer here. He's my business partner in the great friend stables. And everybody who's a longtime great friend knows the name Craig Dato. By the way, here's another thing. I mean, has anybody made more television appearances locally today than Craig Dato? Seriously, this guy's been plastered all over TV. Here he is, Craig Dato, back on Kaplan Crew. Hi, Craig. What's happening? Happy opening day. Yeah, happy opening day to you, man. Hey, let's start off with this. Um, I know that everybody listening and watching wasn't necessarily there, although I will say I, I put it out on the air and said, anybody who wants to come, you might as well just show up. I did have a few people <laughs> that were wedding crashers last night that showed up at our party and were like, yo, man, great friends. I heard you say come to the bears. I'm here, man. Uh, so that was cool. What a great party we had last night with our friends from L.A., L.A. Brown, just so you know. Yeah, that's right, L.A. Brown. I didn't get no invite to that. You did get an invite to that. I did. I'm lying. I did. You yeah, didn't you invite did. me. I just don't uh, know. Craig, that was, a, that was a great night last night, wasn't it? It was good. And you talk about your wedding crashers. You know, those drinks are about 20 bucks a pop. Yeah. We paid for them. Yeah. We did? We did. It's pretty funny because my I, my parents are here visiting from Florida, and my father uh, goes to the bar, and he sees the menu, you know, and it has the prices. But I'm like, no, no, it's a hosted bar, you know? And, um, and he was like, at, at the end of the night, he was like, so – who paid for all that? And I went like this. I go, I'm not sure, but I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, well. It was, oh, a, good well. It was a good night. Wasn't it was it? fun. It was very fun. Yeah. Uh, great night at La Berge. And, and I'll, I'll skip ahead and we'll come back. But tonight, the official after party of Del Mar is at the Rancho Valencia Resort in Rancho Santa Fe. And if you've never been out to the Rancho Valencia, this is like the number one fanciest and, and, and really coolest hotel in all of San Diego County. We're going to have a great night tonight. I think. It's going to be really good. Now, that party, unfortunately, is completely sold out. Can't get in there, but I think they're going to have about 600 people. Uh, it's going to be good. Browner, this is the party with the really great jumbo shrimp that you were talking about from last year. So what you trying to say? I can't get in. Is that well, what it, that's you know, you know, you can get in because here's that's what's what I'm happen. saying. No? Here's here's what's going to happen. Browner shows up, and you know what everybody thinks? Who he play for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Right. So they see Browner show up. You know, you know, what Browner shows up now, especially with these with this new hairdo he got. It's like, oh damn, Jay Z's in the house. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? Yeah, Yesterday, I'm in a meeting and everyone's yelling, "Craig, there's you got to that's a guy from the Clippers is in the uh, is in the lobby. You got to talk to him." I'm, I'm like, "All right, I come out of the meeting. This tall black gentleman says, "I'm on the Clippers. I just got traded from Orlando, and tomorrow I'm going to bring Kawhi, Paul George, Reggie Jackson, a couple other guys." And I'm like, "Really? Oh, okay, great." Um, and I'm a little suspicious. But I say, "Give As me your you number. Be. Give me your number." Give me your email address and uh, I'll get back to you. But yeah, if you're bringing all those guys, we'll put them in the director's room. No problem. So he leaves. He doesn't know that I know like, Matt Soria. He's my go-to guy because he's tight with Kawhi. I call Matt and I'm like, what's the deal? Is Kawhi coming tomorrow? He goes, Kawhi had surgery two days ago. He's he not just coming had ACL to Del Mar. surgery. He's not coming to Del Mar. So this was a complete fraud. What did he, this guy think was going to happen? Like he's just going to bring his family and I'm just going to uh, – Oh, is that your dad or is that Paul George? Like, I mean, what, what, what is it, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know, th this is actually very funny because um, Craig's office here at the track, for people who, who don't know, is kind of a hub for the, the celebrities. Place to be. Right, it is the place to be. And I know that maybe this year where it may not be like it has been in years past for opening day, but generally I think that things will blow up uh, uh, ultimately. So um, there is a time, though. My son and I come walking into Craig's office one day. I say, hey, I'll be over in a few minutes. I'll meet you in your office. He says, okay, great. So me and my son come walking into Craig's office, and there's nobody in there except one guy by himself, Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Kawhi was sitting in Craig's office by himself. So I come walking, and I'm like, yo, what's up? What's 
you doing, man? What's up? You know, and and he's like, oh, hey, what up, man? You know, like, and I'm like, dude, you know, like I've known you since you're 18 years old. You know what I mean? Like I've known you since you're a little kid at San Diego State. Now, oh yeah, man, I remember. I, you know, you don't. It's fine. So my son shakes Kawhi's hand and, you know, Kawhi's got these big old hands. So when my son shook his hand, like Kawhi's middle finger was like up around, you know, almost to his elbow, you know. And what does my son say? Just like any kid would say, yo, man, can I get a picture, man? You know, and oh, I'm like, God. oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't even ask. Don't, sorry, man. Don't even ask. Because that's that's kind of the way Kawhi is. I love that some guy came to you and was trying to bs his way in that he was going to bring all these dudes i wonder if he was going to show up with like five big black dudes first, first of all the, the funniest part about that story right is that the guy says he just got traded to the clippers from orlando here's the thing an nba trade hasn't happened in like five months like the trade <laughs> the trade deadline passed like almost five months ago so there's no way he just got traded yesterday <laughs> Like, lie better, bro. Lie did, better. Did he at least give you the name of an active NBA player so that if he thought, you know what, this guy might go do a little bit of research and he might look up transactions, did he at least give you a name? No. I mean, he gave me his name, and I what, looked him what up. What was his he, name? What was his name? I, I, should, I shouldn't say his name, should I? No. Oh, you can got I you it now. He's trying to another, play you. Can I tell you another story? This was about 18 years ago. I was new here. I was naive. And we got a call that Jerry Seinfeld wanted to come to the races and he, he wanted a suite. So of course we got Jerry Seinfeld a suite, booked him in the suite. No problem. Middle of the day. I figure I should go up and say hi to Jerry Seinfeld, be a good guy to meet. I walk up into the seat. I suite. I poke my head in. I don't see Jerry. And I say, excuse me, is, is Jerry Seinfeld here? Some guy walks up to me and says, yeah, hi, I'm Jerry Seinfeld. He was a dentist from Reseda. <laughs> Oh, I no. got played. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. Like, technically, he is Jerry Seinfeld, so yeah. they didn't lie, lie, but they did not tell the full truth. <laughs> uh, Craig Dato is here. He's the chief marketing officer at Del Mar, and it is opening day at the Del Mar racetrack. It's been a great afternoon and so much still to come up. And, uh, and Craig, I, I want to just get your uh, a, a few takes on some things, and then we'll, uh, I want to hear about – well, I want to share with everybody – our horses from the great friend stables, but we, uh, I, I want to hear about the breeders cup, which I know you're concentrated on opening day. And I know you're concentrated on this meet, but just, if you could just for one second, look ahead. Okay. And, and talk to us about the breeders cup because breeders cup tickets go on sale today. And we just had the U S open, which was not the same as it could have been. It was still a great event, but hopefully by November, this place can be at full capacity and everybody can be having a great time and people will come in from all over the world. So just talk to us a little bit about the Breeders' Cup. We fully expect to be 100% capacity by November. Um, when we held this thing back in 2017, we didn't really know what we were getting into. And as it turned out, 75% of the attendees were from outside of Southern California. These people flew in private from all over the world, a ton of Irish people, a ton of French people, English people. And they spent some serious money. The economic impact of those two days of racing and the few days surrounding it was $97 million to San Diego. This is a wow. big deal. So to be hosting again this year, um, we're so excited. And as you said, tickets go on sale today. They're going to sell out really quick. So if you're local and you want to go to Breeders' Cup, get on it. I'm um, slash tickets. Craig, will, will we see now um, the Breeders' Cup coming back to Del Mar every four to five years. I mean, 17 to 21, they went up to Santa Anita, which is always kind of a stop along the way. Beautiful track, doesn't have the energy and the vibe that Del Mar has, but still a great place. Finland in Kentucky, um, Churchill Downs in Kentucky. Uh, is there is Del Mar now part of a rotation for the Breeders' Cup? I certainly hope so. As you said, it's been four years. They They made more money here than they'd ever made. And look at the weather. See, if you hold it in New York or Kentucky in the first week of November, it could snow. Uh, we all know here it's going to be 72 and sunny, right? So that gives them a lot of peace of mind to want to come back here. Um, I think they were a little rest, resident early um, about how big we were. You know, are we big enough? But, you know, we capped it at about 35,000. And as I said, the handle was huge and everybody had a great time. So I would expect every three or four years that we will host another Breeders' Cup. All right, beautiful. Craig Dato is here on opening day. Browner, you were just about to say? When you have an event like that come here and be successful in the people who actually threw the event, and like you said, with the weather in addition to that, I feel like this should be the home of it, like period, full stop. Is that even possible? 
a lot of people agree with you, but politically, I don't see it happening. You know, the okay. Breeders' Cup is based in Kentucky. I, I just, I think they always got to go to Keeneland and Churchill Downs every few years. But uh, I mean, if it's if it's Keeneland, Churchill, and Santa Anita, Del Mar, that's pretty cool. We'll take yeah. that. Yeah, I let mean, me, let, let me present something else to you. How about we create our own big time sports race horse racing day of the year? Is that possible? There's a lot of money behind that. So the fu to fund these huge purses, people pay money to nominate their horses for Breeders' Cup when they're babies. So they're collecting thousands and thousands of dollars from every horse. I don't know that, that we could pull that off, to be honest with you. So okay. I think the answer, Branner, is I don't think we can do it. Okay. Hey, listen, breederscup.com slash tickets. If I got cut off a little bit earlier, breederscup.com slash tickets. And I just I, I want everybody to know this because if you're local – and you want to be a part of this event, you need to get on it now. Because I can tell you this, don't call me and ask me for Breeders' Cup tickets because I'm not calling <laughs> Craig and asking him for Breeders' Cup tickets because that's usually the way things go. People need things at Del Mar, and I'm like, yeah, I got you, no problem. And then I call Craig, and he hopefully takes care of it. So thank you. <laughs> how, how, how's the bar looking under the desk this year, Craig? It's good. <laughs> I was just over here with Scott's dad getting it ready. Yeah, I saw y'all in the background. Yeah, I saw y'all in the background movements of That's one of my favorite things about the track, man, the bar under your desk. Yeah. When are we going to see you? Today. Oh, you are coming today. Good. Okay. I, I got to get my credentials. All right. Understood. All right. Uh, Craig Dato, let me uh, ask you to do us a favor. And I say us, I mean everybody who's listening to this afternoon and everybody who's watching on YouTube and everybody who will watch this tonight on television on Channel 4 San Diego and Channel 4 Santa Barbara, 118 Palos Verdes, and 118 Orange County. Can you take us through the horses in the Great Friends Stables barn so that when people come to Del Mar, they can pick up the program and they can find great friends and ownership? But let's give them a little sneak peek of what we've got. Are you ready to do that? I'm ready. Okay, before you do it, give me one quick minute to just tell everybody about the Total T Clinic and TotalTClinic.com. Listen, it's super easy. Make an appointment. And it, you'll walk in. It'll take you 15 minutes. You'll get your a little bit of blood work done. Done. Don't be such a wuss, okay? I mean, it doesn't hurt. It's not a problem. And um, I'm going to tell you right now that if your testosterone levels are low, which is pretty normal for guys as we start to age, um, and then you start, you're like, why am I tired? Why am I sluggish? Why don't I feel energized? Why don't I want to work out? Why can't I perform in the bedroom the way I used to? Um, these are all things that, that could be the result of low testosterone. When you get your testosterone levels right, man, you are just a superstar again. And here's the thing. Total T Clinic is so sure in the products and the services that they provide that they're willing for the first time ever to say $99 for the first month. 99 bucks. So people ask me, they're like, yo, what does this cost? And I always tell people, I'm like, listen, go in, talk to them. Cause oftentimes this can be covered by your health insurance. But if it's not only $99 for your first month of treatments, I'm telling you guys, this will change your life. Total T clinic, total T clinic.com. What do you think about that? Craig Dato? I think it's unbelievably cool. <laughs> really? that, that, that was a look like what are you doing telling everybody my personal business what's your problem <laughs> all right craig let's talk about some of the horses in the barn with the great friend stables because i know a lot of the listeners and a lot of viewers will be like hey i'd like to know what you guys got and i like when, when people come out and they don't know a lot about racing they're just looking for something it could be a color it could be a name of a jockey could be the name of the horse but They'll be interested in what we got. Okay. So today we have three running. Um, so I'm going to talk about a horse now in the second race. race. So I understand by the time this airs, the second race may have already run. Well, yeah, probably so. So you're going to want to go to your computer and check the results to see if I was right. <laughs> so we've got a horse in the second race who's never run before. His name is Get Back Goldie. His dad was Golden Sense, one of our trainer Doug O'Neill's best horses ever, won two Breeders' Cups. Get Back Goldie is running for the first time today, and our trainer absolutely loves him. Come on. He's eight to one. And let me tell you a little insight here. So, of course, the favorite in the race is the Bob Baffert horse. He's going to be. Which, can I just interrupt and ask? I saw Bob earlier. Yeah. So, can you just tell people? Because people ask me, and I don't really know what the details are. Is Bob back? Is he cool? He's always been cool in California. Uh, Churchill Downs as a racetrack said he can't race there. 
uh, Belmont as a racetrack said he can't race there. Then he just uh, won a court case. Then he won a court case. He won a case court case day? in New York. So I think he's he's back in New York now. But he's always been okay. He did nothing in California. So if the Kentucky Racing Commission would have banned him, then we would have had to uphold that. But that didn't happen. So, so he's it. good to go. Anyway, so Bob Baffert's got the favorite in the race. He's going to be probably six to five, right? Our jockey, Abel Cedillo, worked out the Baffert horse and worked out our horse and got to choose which one he wanted to ride. And he chose our horse. Just saying. Uh -oh. Just saying. Uh -oh. That is some uh, That is some inside info right there, ladies and gentlemen. So now go to the results page on your computer and see if I was out of my mind. If get back Goldie won, then I was right. I if want to say Midnight Mammoth won, then I was wrong. All right. I want to say to all of the – and by, wait, just real quick. Is, is this the horse's first race? Yes. Okay, so they, these are little babies. These are these two are two-year-olds. Yeah, it's yeah. first race for Baffert's horse too. Okay, so I want to say to everybody who's listening on radio that yeah, you may have to go check the results. Now, look on television at night between seven and eight p.m. on Channel Four San Diego and the Cox Your View Network. You know the deal. Uh, we've recorded this earlier in the day, and so yeah, nobody's hiding that from you. So let's uh, let's see what happens. So in the second race. One more time. The horse's name is get back Goldie first time out and our trainer loves him and the jockey worked both the favorite and our horse and, and the jockey chose our horse and we're eight to one in the morning line. Gosh, I hope we can go to 10 to one, 12 to one. I mean, you're so I, greedy. Jesus, I, just take eight. I know. Listen, I will take the eight to one. I just hope we stay at eight to one. I hope we don't go down to three to yeah. one, you yeah. know? So, all right. So get back Goldie in the second race today. And uh, that's we we got a shot, but who knows? These are these are first time starters, two year olds. You know, they all of a sudden guy gets out on the track and he's like, "Hey, you know, I've been training really nice, but wait, what are all these other horses doing out here? Wait a second, what are what are all these people doing out here? And gosh, I'm nervous. And by the way, my hand gestures. This is that's my really horse good. racing. That's, this is that's this good. Well, Browner, you don't like this, Big Brown? No, bro. No, bro. No, no. Looks <laughs> like you're playing flat piano keys. Just don't do that. Just let it go. No more. He's a wise All right. man. All right. All right. Very good. Craig Dato is here. He's the chief marketing officer at Del Mar, but everybody knows because of the last 15 years on radio, we also are partners in what is called the Great Friends Stables. We have 14 horses in our stable going into Del Mar, and Craig is telling us what we've got today, three races. So the first one is in the second race, and, and let's go to the, the next race, Craig. Sixth race. We have a horse by the name of Energizer. We claimed Energizer in a race in at Churchill Downs in Kentucky back in May, and we've been waiting for the Del Mar meet to race him, and here he is running on opening day. He's five to one on the morning line. Eh, to be honest, eh, which means he's going to win, right? Because I don't <laughs> like that. right, yeah, right, right. Craig is going to be like, I'm super confident. I love the story yeah. of of the first horse, you know, and the jockey chose us versus Baffert, so we all think that's going to be a win. Now we're going to go into this one. We're like, eh, horse isn't so great, not training so well. Now the horse is going to come out and wind up winning. We probably won't even bet on it, nope. and then we'll just kick ourselves for that. Yep. Okay. All right. So, and then in the last race, when everybody's good and liquored up, 10th race, number two, Oxbridge. This is a horse that we bought from another owner in Doug's barn, and he raced in this exact same race back in June at Santa Anita, and he ran second by a head. It was kind of an unlucky situation. He's back today. That race was on the grass. This one's on the dirt. That's the only difference. He likes dirt fine. Um, I think we may go off as the favorite. Right now we're five to one, but I think they're going to bet us down. So we have a really, really good chance in, in the last race as well. Now, we have always wanted to get horses in on opening day because we want all of our investors to have a great time and feel like, you know, this is the most prestigious day of the meet. You know, let's get in some races. And then we did get greedy. We went from wanting to be in opening day to actually having the audacity of saying we want to win on opening day. But you know what, dude? We've done it twice. We have. We've done it twice. Make a prediction for me right now. Will the great friends stand in the winner's circle today? We got three shots, Craig. Come on. I think there's a 65% chance we win one today. Oh, wow. 65%. Yeah. I think there's a 5% chance we win two today. Whoa. And then, Whoa. And then, and then what's left? 30% chance we win none. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. There's always that chance, man. You know, you, you so badly want to win, and winning is so hard. But um, I mean, look how big these fields are. There's so many horses in these races. I mean, because you got to realize you've got nine, ten other ownership groups who are just as confident as we are. Yeah, everybody yeah. thinks they're going to win. I know. And and the thing about it is, is that these these fields are all full because there's fewer racing days. So, you know, and, and everybody wants to bring horses in from other places because of the ship and win bonus, which could you just in 10 seconds describe what that means? If you haven't run in California in a year, so if you're running racing in Kentucky, or whatever, and you come out to Del Mar, we will pay you $5,000 in shipping costs, plus whatever purse money you win, we will increase it by 50%. Oh, wow. It's an amazing yeah. deal. I know we got to win. We got to win with one of our shippers today. Really uh, Energizer is a ship and win qualifier. That's the oh, one that I said, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Dato is the chief marketing officer at Del Mar. It is opening day. We are so happy to be out here. And uh, man, it is going to be just one spectacular afternoon. And for those of you that are watching on TV tonight on Channel 4 and the Cox Your View Network, make sure you check the results and see how we did. Uh, hey, Craig, thank you. Happy opening day. More to come. Stick around. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego. Your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Catch Kaplan and crew Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. If you've listened to Scott Kaplan the last 20 years, you know one thing. He likes to stir up some sh A new generation of radio. The all new and mightier 1090. With live theater on hold and performers and crew out of work, the folks at Subaru of El Cajon had a great idea. Why not help all the artists and artisans in San Diego put a musical on? And so Sharing the Love was born. This musical collaboration between Subaru of El Cajon and the performing arts community celebrates positivity in the face of strife. Love is for sharing, hate is despairing, there is no comparing the two. Watch Sharing the Love, Saturday and Sunday, only on your view. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. The San Diego Padres are back in action tonight after the All-Star break. We're going to take a look at a few things to keep an eye on here in the second half. The battle of the NL West leads all storylines here. The Giants sit atop the NL West with a two-game lead over the Dodgers and a six-game lead over the Padres. The Dodgers and Padres will match up in nine games, six of which are in September in the thick of the divisional race. Starting pitching will be another area to keep an eye on. Ryan Weathers left Sunday's game against the Rockies with an apparent Achilles injury. Hugh Darvish was placed on the injured list because of left hip inflammation retroactive to last Friday. And Blake Snell has been recovering from food poisoning. He is eligible to return today. Lastly, the offense needs to be more consistent up and down the lineup if the Friars expect to make a push for the postseason. I'm Haley Stasiak. That's your Sports in a Minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight.
Rich Eisen here inviting you to catch my show, The Rich Eisen Show, on our flagship radio station, The Mightier 1090. We're on every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time. You like what you hear. If not, that's just uh, I guess too bad. A new generation of radio, the all new and mightier 1090. And so it begins your epic adventure, where champagne bubbly meets rose petal rain. Floating your way to a life of leisure. To the victor go the spoils, as the neon gods send Lady Luck your way. Funner. It's more than a place. It's a state of mind. Find your funner here. Love Promise Moments are part of the mission of what we do here at Subaru El Cajon. A love promise moment is when we as human beings deliver an experience beyond exceptional to any one of our guests, and then that guest's life is positively affected by that interaction. It's amazing to watch what happens when two human beings talk on that level and create something magical. And sometimes they drive away with a car, sometimes they don't, but we've had an impact on that person's life and that's the magic. You know, our employees react to things like Make-A-Wish, Feeding San Diego, and the other groups we help by jumping in. This year, through COVID, we were able to help a little girl out and got her a rather large scooter that she needed for mobility. We gave up our Christmas party as employees, and we actually adopted a wish of a young girl here in El Cajon, and we gave her a three-wheel scooter so she didn't have to use her wheelchair all the time. It gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. Let's take it up a notch with Kaplan and Crew tonight's Premium Boost, powered by the Mightier 1090. We are in the hope business. What we do every day and what we've done for 40 years is to provide kids and families going through critical illnesses hope that tomorrow's going to be a better day. My favorite wish is the next one because that is the power of our organization is to bring hope to kids who are going through something right now and hope can't wait so people can get involved now by donating resources they can donate in kind they can donate their time as volunteers they can donate dollars because kids are still getting diagnosed with illnesses that qualify for make wish every day so people can visit us online at sandiego.wish.org they can visit us and follow us on social media. There are so many ways to get connected and people can help in many, many different ways. We need your support now more than ever because illness doesn't take a vacation and it doesn't take a break because of COVID-19. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Kaplan Accrued tonight's premium boost is powered by the Mightier 1090. Kaplan Accrued tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive, uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. 
but if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk.